Where did you see the USB key? The USB key is under the small white saucer that you lifted. Where is the USB key now? The USB key is under the center cup. How awesome is that? You must have seen that demo when Google have launched their Gemini AI services which however later found out to be staged but the idea of this demo was something unseen before in the AI space and what if you can actually add AI vision, voice and ability to speak in your own dream SaaS application or in your business use case today. Hi, my name is Avijit, you're watching Note Together where I try to simplify latest tech and innovations for your future and your business. Let's find out. That Google demo has really sparked a lot of interest inside the AI community including myself to actually develop something whereas an application can see, listen and talk to you. The idea was clear. We need to somehow able to build a system where we can feed a video to the AI service and the AI service should be able to analyze it and should be responding as if a human would respond by speaking to you. And as I was going through my medium reading list, I found this article which is written by Julian De Luca. And it seems he has found out rather unique technique to achieve this behavior. So this video will have four sections. In the first section, we will discuss his paper and see how this is going to work. In the second section, we'll fork his implementation from his GitHub and try to run it ourselves and see if we can make this work out. In the third section, we'll discuss some real possibilities and use cases that we can build using the multimodal AI services that we have available today and what we can build when this technology matures. And in the fourth and final section, we'll find out possibilities of integrating this service with a locally hosted large language model so that you can run similar application for free. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so here we are at Luca's article. Before we proceed with any discussion, let's first see the Google demo first. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. That was really cool. Like everyone else, the disappointment was it was all staged. How Luca have solved the problem is really interesting. If you know how video works, it will all make sense to you. So a video is nothing but a sequence of multiple frames of images, right? So that means when you are watching this video, for example, this is nothing but like if it is 30 frames per second or FPS video, that means it's like 30 images and it is put in a sequence as fast as 30 frames per second. Our eyes cannot distinguish this fast movement of sequence. It appears to us as video. So he applied the same principle. So let's go back to his article and see how he has solved the problem of sending video to the AI service. So he says that he has leveraged GPT-4 Vision API to achieve this demo. Now, GPT-4 Vision doesn't accept video as input when you call the API. It accepts photo. I think the primary questions for me was how he had fit the video into the API. What he has done really is he has taken screenshots of every frame happening in let's say last five or six seconds in that video and then created a grid of screenshots and then made it one image if that makes sense to you and now if he sends this image the next problem is if you ask the gpt vision api about this image api will respond is as a grid of images so there must be a good prompting to make sure that that the gpt4 vision understand that what we want so he basically says that he needed to fine tune the system prompt a lot to make it understand this was from a video so he said that the assistant received a tile series of screenshots from a user's live video feed these screenshots represent sequential frames from the video capturing distinct moments. How awesome is that? That's a really intelligent thinking. Then the assistant is to analyze this frame as a continuous video feed and answering user's question while focusing on direct and specific interpretation of the visual content. How awesome is this prompt? So basically when this image is presented to the API, the API actually sees not this as a grid of image, rather a sequence of image that is presented as a video input. And he also discussed in very detail that if you want to play with the prompt in your own application, what all things that you need to remember if you are following this pattern. I will attach the link of his article in my video. Please go through it if you really want to adapt this pattern in your application when using any kind of vision API so that your application also have vision capabilities or some sort of video analyzing capability. 
So that is one problem. The other problem was the user must be able to talk to the assistant without interacting with the UI. That means the application or the UI should be able to know that when user has stopped talking so that he then takes the user's input and transcribe it into text and then sends it to the GPT-4 Vision API. For that, he has used a specialized Node.js module to detect when user have stopped talking or giving the instructions. So in the next step, we will clone his repository and we will review his code. Let's see. Okay, now I'm in my VS Code terminal. I'll go to his repository. There you go. I'll do a fork of it. Yep. Now let me clone this repository. Uh, you don't need to necessarily fork the repository, uh, but because I'm planning to do some more work on it in the future, so that's why I have done a fork, but you can directly clone his repository. So now I have cloned GPT video. So we'll go inside GPT video. From a first look, it seems he has used Next.js for the application. Let's see the dependencies quickly. So he has used OpenAI module. I think that is to call the GPT-4 Vision API. And then he used Silence Aware Recorder. And I think this is the Node.js module, which has helped to achieve user interactions with the app purely using the voice. Whenever user will finish his prompt, he will stop. And at this moment, the app would know that the instruction has been given. So it will continue to process. Let's go and check the actual logical side of the application. Let's open the chat dot jsx um i think he has set up the image width to be 512 pixels i think he has set interval as 250 so 250 is like a millisecond so that means he is taking almost like four frames from each second you can actually change this to, and probably just tune it as you need but remember if you make it too small like 100 that means your image grid will have more images and i'm not sure how gpt vision api is going to react so i'll keep it all default he has kept four columns so that means the final image as he has also seen his blog have four columns so all total, uh, I think there is five seconds of video uh, that has been put into a grid structure like frame. Um, there is a silent threshold of minus 30. If the audio decibel goes to minus 30 decibel or something, then it, uh, it will consider that user has completed his prompting. After that, he has created a couple of uh, function. I think this function is basically transforming a base64 encoded information into a binary file so that this probably can be uploaded. I think this function is used by a couple of other uh, functions for example the next one where it is uploading the image uh, to a host it's using the base64 to blob functions so i think what is happening is whenever this image is being captured it is being encoded into a base64 encoded format and then it's using this function to create it a binary file and then he is uploading that file that image file to temp files so if you are not aware temp files is a uh, free temporary host of a file so if you want to send a big file like up to 100 mb of file to your friends or families or someone of course a file with no sensitive information you can actually upload it here and you can send the link what i am interested in is on these chat functions because this is where i think the actual logic is being played basically if you see the how the audio is being captured it's using the use silence our recorder module it's capturing the audio like the user provided prompt and the user provided prompt minimal decibel is minus the minus 100 and there is a silence duration so basically after a prompt if the user is silent for 2500 millisecond which is around i think um 2.5 second uh, then the application would consider that user has completed his prompt he is capturing the video a video slash webm format uh, point to note here that it's not recording screen it's not recording audio it's just capturing the video from the camera so once start recording function is being called i think the recording is being starting so it's starting both the audio and video recording almost at the same time i think the on speech uh, function is where it's calling the open ai speech to text and it's sending the speech the it's sending the audio file and this is basically transforming the audio recording into a textual format okay so next i think is it's creating the image grid from the video then it's uploading the image to the free host that we have just seen and after that i think it's sending both the image and the text output of the user's prompt to the gpt4 vision api so let's look at the api if you go to API chat root.js, this is where the logic of the GPT-4 Vision API is written. So it's calling GPT-4 Vision Preview Model. That is a system prompt. And then it's also adding the messages. I think that message is coming from this chat.jsx uh, file. I think this is the content, if you can see. Now it's time for app to respond not as text but as audio. That's why this time it's calling text to speech API and whatever response that it is receiving from the GPT-4 Vision API, it's feeding that to this text to speech API and that that response will come as audio 
and then it's playing that audio basically so this is how it works i will list down these steps once again for you so you have a better clarity now it's time to test we are inside gpt video folder i'll do npm install okay so i think there is a bit of dependency resolution error after doing a complete investigation i think the easiest way to make it run is just to npm install dash dash force so if you are facing the same issue i think what you can do is just run npm install dash dash force and then you will not have the error this will install all the library properly and it will work okay so the installation is done all the module is now downloaded and installed we'll just copy this command and we'll run it and there you go so the application is visible all you have to do is specify your open ai api key here and just hit start session have your camera ready and play around it where did you see the usb key the usb key is under the small white saucer that you lifted Where is the USB key now? The USB key is under the center cup. How awesome is that? Can you tell me what this is? This is a map of the United Kingdom and Ireland with parts of the surrounding areas visible. The map is oriented with north at the top, and it includes geographical details such as landforms and bodies of water. What game is this? This is the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. Now let's test some color identification. What do you see? You are playing with a plush toy that resembles a green character with large eyes. Initially, you are holding the toy by its appendage, and then you bring it closer to the camera, ending with a close-up of the toy's face. My brain is exploding with different set of ideas after trying this demo. I'm not sure how much of these ideas are already existed in the market or have been tested. So in this section, we will discuss this as ideas that are possible with this multimodal AI API services. First being the real-time sign language translator. A problem that it would resolve is it will close the communication gap between a normal person and a person who is deaf or have heard of hearing difficulties. Imagine an app where an user can use the app and take a video of a person who is communicating with you as a sign language and you don't know anything about sign language you could still be able to instantly get response from the app what he is trying to say isn't that amazing second implementations of SAS idea could be quick fitness corrections analyzer the main problem that it will resolve is it will help you from being injured because of a wrong posture in your workout and this will also improve your fitness routines the third idea is an interior design specialist app where you can take a video of your entire room and the app should be able to analyze and help you with interior design what all furniture that you can say what all color and textures that you can add to the wall etc etc so the fourth one is also one of my favorite that is interactive diy repair guide so this will be an app where you can take a video of a broken appliance or any of your home improvement requirement and the app should be able to analyze and immediately give you feedback about how to fix an appliance or repair a broken appliance or fix a door there can also be another kind of SaaS where it could be an emotional well-being checker the app will work more like if you are on emotional distress you should be able to communicate with the app and by using your facial texture information your voice and all these details the app should be able to give you some immediate help like you know listen to a music or listen to a motivational speak providing you some anxiety and depression free techniques i don't know there are could be different immediate measures that uh, an app can suggest to help people from doing a fatal injury in an emotional distress and i think that could be an also a brilliant SaaS idea using multimodal ai applications so what do you think please write in the comment what all other SaaS ideas that you are thinking or which of the SaaS ideas you have liked and maybe you want to build upon okay so now we are in the final section of the video where we will discuss if there is a way we can actually run this demo using open source APIs, which are either locally hosted or maybe served by an API provider and maybe another API provider that gives you enough free credits. So you can try this all for free. 
if you think through there are only three core apis that we just need to replace with three alternatives i'm not sure if these open source models are strong enough for the demo that is something subject to be tested so in a sense the first api that we need to find an alternative is the gpt4 vision api now i know for that matter olama is supporting both lava and back lava models so in theory you can run these models in your home pc and you should be able to send the base 64 encoded format of your picture or the image or the grid image basically and then ask the lava to explain the picture like this so that is our vision api sorted so the next api that we need to sort out is speech to text and as well as text to speech so i think if you really want a very good quality yet free uh, apis you should probably check out these 11 lab apis i think they give a very decent free um, access to text to speech and speech to text apis also write in the comments if you want me to try these open source models for this demo and i'll definitely create a future video if you need one that's it for this video for the next future videos i'll definitely try open source large language model to be used in this project and try to run the demo for free i'll definitely update on that through the youtube post so please make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get to know when i update the code and you should get access to the code as well I usually bring such cool projects and I'll definitely bring another one for the next video. So until then, take care, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.